Good morning and welcome to today's CSA Supplier Member Webinar. Today is the turn of Aram with their webinar entitled, Is Your Organisation Ready for the Tsunami of Debt on the Horizon? I will now hand you across to today's presenter, Chris Warburton, who will take you through the webinar. Chris, over to you. Thanks very much, Mark. So, uh, welcome everyone. Um, yeah, so uh, as you just said, I think today we're going to talk a bit about um, what's expected to be a tsunami of debt that's, that's coming through uh, really as a result of the, the lockdown and the exit from lockdown. Uh, and we've been spending a bit of time uh, looking at this and sort of planning around that. So, so that's what we're going to cover today. Um, before I get into it, I mean, first, um, I want to explain just a little bit about Aram, uh, who Aram are and, and my, my background as well. Um, so Aram are a, a consultancy uh, and we specialize in uh, collections and recoveries uh, consulting really across the credit life cycle. Um, yeah, and we work across the UK, across international, uh, and we, we spend a lot of time sort of working with clients in terms of what their strategy needs to look like, uh, their systems and helping them configure their systems. Um, my, my, my name, as Mark said, is Chris Wharton. Uh, I'm a principal consultant at Aram. I've been with them for four years. And before I was doing uh, consulting, uh, I spent a lot of time uh, on, the, uh, on, on the other side in, in, in business run protections and uh, recoveries uh, departments. Um, so, so, so today, uh, we're going to talk a bit about um, lockdown uh, you know, and what our experience has been around lockdown um, uh, yeah, over, over the last three months. And I've been on a couple of the CSA calls um, since, since lockdown started. And I know we've all been through uh, quite a process the last few months. And we've sort of used this slide here really to explain what, what we've seen from a, from a process point of view. And I think there's sort of like five real elements. I mean, I think when we first started off, you know, we were really in that sort of like react mode. Um, you know, we, our concern, and you heard this on the CSA calls, were you know, around safety of staff, social distancing, making sure the staff are safe, safe, making sure we could have business continuity. So, you know, that working from home, being able to work from home, and some of the challenges that came with that. So I remember one of the early challenges was around just getting physically getting laptops, as an example. Then we sort of went into this response phase, um, which was really around, okay, now we've got people off, off, uh, off site, uh, now we're up and running, we can actually do some of our basic processes. It's like, well, then how do we start making those processes uh, a little bit more streamlined? So one of the early uh, early effects we saw was just a huge wave of calls coming in, as everyone here knows. Um, you know, so how can we start to then automate those uh, those processes? You know, setting up the, the payment holidays, the payment holiday schemes they need to be set up within the system. You know, thinking about credit bureau management as well. Then we were sort of went into this sort of like resilience phase, um, which is then you know just thinking around well, like, how can we make those processes better? So in terms of like how do we configure that within the systems, make sure it's going through the systems properly, uh, making sure it's being controlled, thinking a little bit about digital processing. So like how do we start to create online functionality to make that smoother? Um, you know, and then and then you know, do we need to capture, for example, additional uh, data elements? And, and the last two phases, which is really where we kind of think we are today, is in almost like in this return phase um, or this reinvention phase. Um, so the return phase is really around. You know, payment holidays are going to expire. You know, there's going to be the furlough scheme is due to come to an end. You know, what will the impact be on the uh, on the economy from that? And how will we start to handle that? And how do we start planning for that exit? Um, you know, what's going to happen from a working from home point of view? You know, are people going to continue to work for home or not? You know, how are we going to manage the return back to the office? So that's the return phase, which is currently being considered. Um, and the other, the, the last phase is then this reinvention uh, element, which is also going on in the background at the moment, which is people starting to consider their, you know, target operating model. How do they optimize that? You know, do they have the right people in the right locations? So looking at things like real estate and really the whole piece around, can we use this as an opportunity to sort of redesign our customer journeys? So we're in this sort of like transition. I think we've gone through the first three phases. There's some risk with the, with the area there around whether we get back to the first, just with our local lockdown. But we're really in this sort of like return and uh, reinvention phase. And we've helped clients all the way through this. Um, and I think really what we're talking about now is like this, this, this exit playbook or this exit um, uh, process in terms of like how do we sort of manage that return in a, in a sustainable, controlled way. Um, and, and really, I think, um, you know, the lockdown process, as we've seen, has really sort of been accelerating to some of the wider trends, I suppose, that, 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 that we would talk about in the market. Um, and, and those wider trends that, that we typically see are around things like technology. And I think over the last few years, we've seen sort of, you know, an investment in technology around intensive use of data, 
scoring, modelling, those things have, have been sort of hot topics. Uh, regulatory changes, everyone on this call will definitely know, is, is been um, you know, a, a microscope put on all of us from a, a regulatory point of view, with dramatic just increases in in, um, uh, in, in regulation and scrutiny. Um, and so that's been a uh, that's been a, a trend, I'd say, over the last over the last good few years. Um, there's a trend around customer focus. Um, you know, the financial impacts. Um, so everyone's been tr trying to do more with less. Uh, and demographics. We've got a demographic change where people become much more tech savvy. Um, and those trends are sort of almost like being accelerated um, uh, to a large extent under 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 COVID. Um, and COVID, I'd say, probably falls into that that unknown box, which is something we didn't expect to happen. A lot of people didn't plan for, and yet it's allowed us to basically um, accelerate things forward. One of the comments when I was on a, a webinar the, the 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 other week, and this is actually a, um, uh, it was actually a, um, a a supermarket retailer, and they were talking about how digital adoption has been transformed as a result of the um, a result of the lockdown, um, and as Microsoft just came back and they said something similar. They said they had like in, they've had two years worth of digital adoption in just two months. Um, so so really, I think that the lockdown is sort of is the, the trends that we're seeing haven't really changed, but they've been accelerated. A lot of them have been accelerated as a result of as a result of lockdown. And so some of the things that, that we've definitely been, been seeing is, you know, people are spending time now talking about the exit strategy. And this is why we, we spend a bit of time looking at this with clients really around, you know, driven by the end of the payment holiday um, scheme, um, but really around data segmentation and how we're going to handle that return back to normal. Um, acceleration of digital and this digital first strategy, um, which is like people have used digital to really handle the volume. And it's like, well, now, how do we use that as a new normal? And one of the things that definitely happens is it's given all of us, not just, you know, a certain demographic or like younger demographic who would be um, attending to, uh, to, to, to migrate towards digital. We've seen it really across the board because we've all been forced to use digital uh, and adopt and adopt digital. And so now we're more used to it. And so now it's getting uh, more adopted and we're getting more investment around that as well. Um, other, 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 other themes definitely around process controls and then cost efficiency as well. So it's definitely being talked about. So, so all of this is creating hot topics. And what, what we just put down on here is just what are the hot topics we're, we're, we're hearing about? What are people worrying about today? What are people worrying about in the near term? And then what are the things that people are anticipating coming up in the future? Um, so today, I think, is, is really a question around uh, payment deferrals. What happens? Is there going to be an extension or not? How do we plan those scenarios today? And thinking about capacity planning uh, and hiring or uh, process redesign really to, have, to, to handle that, um, um, uh, the volume spike. Um, some, 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 some clients have gone out and sort of done uh, significant hiring. Uh, others are really sort of investing in uh, digital. Some are doing a wait and see kind of approach. The other theme that's, um, that's being talked about now is really around gathering data. Um, so how can data be gathered today that can help us with segmentation as we come out of, um, as we come out of lockdown? Um, so this is really around, you know, can we gather data today around, you know, our custom, what the customer situation is? Are they on furlough? How do we think about, um, can we take earlier actions to identify they might be in um, financial difficulties? Because a lot of these customers are sort of already at, at current um, and they look as if everything's fine, but they might be experiencing financial difficulties. So gathering data today is definitely something that, that's being talked about amongst the people we talk with. Um, investment in digital readiness. Um, one of, the, one of the, the, the things that's definitely happened as a result of um, uh, the, the lockdown and we've seen is, you know, in collections, as, as we know, um, getting investment for, um, for, for new technology or getting investment for changes can often be difficult in collections. You know, that, that's typically, typically the theme. We see that. Um, one of the one of the benefits in some ways, unfortunately, um, of the situation is, is collections has been front and center of the changes. And we've seen that. Um, and, you know, we've been front and center in terms of the volume um, and some of the impacts and handling it. And so the, the, there's definitely been more investment and more res more change readiness within the collections processes, and that's been and that's 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 sort of continuing on. Uh, and so people are looking around. Well, like, how can we think about and and uh, continue with the investment we've had in digital to create this almost like 
self-serve digital uh, functionality, really, because we know that a it's been on our on our um, on our radar for the longest time, and it's going to help the business, and it's what customers want. Uh, secondly, it's also going to help us get out of what's going to be expected to be a peak of volume as um, as we come out of lockdown. So that's 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 also been talked about in terms of like contact channels, different types of technology, self serve technology. Um, other themes, other themes that that are current conversations. Um, we're seeing quite a lot of collection system upgrades. Um, you know, there's a lot uh, just really around, you know, people just taking a step back and saying, is our technology really suitable, uh, uh, suitable, suitable for the needs we have um, now, but also into the into the um, into, into the future. One of the comments that was made to me was, you know, I think if if we'd had the right technology uh, and if we had the right uh, system configuration, you know, some of the early problems we had in terms of volumes coming through and manual workarounds just wouldn't have happened and you know they would have been in a much better position from a from a volume point of view uh, and a volume handling point of view so some of that sort of predicated on having the right systems the right configuration and that that's that's definitely a theme of that's much more top of mind now than I, than it ever has been or i've seen in, in sort of recent history at least anyway um and lastly around organizational dynamics um you know i think as i, as I mentioned i think you know the covid lockdown has really sort of allowed some of the progress in um, uh, process development in collections to accelerate. Um, and if you think about just, for example, collections letters, collections letters typically would take three months, maybe even six months with all the various approvals and uh, rewrites to, to get signed off and get put in the system. Um, you think this time around it, with the COVID lockdown, a lot of them done were, were done within weeks, you know, one week or even two weeks. Um, so, so th there is an ability to be able to make changes quickly if, if there's the right focus. And a lot of organizations are taking a step back saying, well, look, how do we keep that going? Obviously, we've got to have the right controls in place, but how do we keep that going in the future? And just thinking about organizational dynamics and also decision making. So I'd say that those, those five are kind of the, the current hot topics. And, there's them, and then we, as we sort of go into the future, we sort of talk about well, what are some of the things that people know on the horizon? and What are people, what are people sort of starting to worry about? Uh, and the first one there is really around economic impacts. Um, you know, I think the report came out, there's, you know, it's going to be like 700,000 redundancies um, uh, across, across, the, across the customer base, um, uh, sorry, across the, um, across, across the UK. Um, so economic impacts are definitely top of mind. I think that the, the view is that it's, probably going to happen in the October time frame. We're waiting to see what's going to happen with, you know, the furlough status in particular. But certainly we look at notification redundancies, it looks like there's going to be a wave that's coming through. And then the question for us in collections is, well, what does that mean in terms of collections? Um, the, 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 the other economic impact is going to be, well, what happens if we have, um, you know, another lockdown, as an example, and, you know, and will, will we have sort of geographic type um, impacts where it, where it affects, uh, impacts particular geographies or even particular industries as well. And having this sort of geographic and set the view is something that, 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 that people are looking at. Um, also under economic impacts, I mean, we've seen sort of, we've seen some quite strange uh, behavior, I suppose, or uh, dynamics going on in terms of some of the markets. So we've obviously saw, you know, House, houses, the house market pretty much stopped um, over lockdown, but now it's gone sort of a little bit bananas, um, and with with record house prices, the result largely the result of stamp, the stamp duty cut. Um, the, the, another example would be the uh, the motor finance industry, which you know again um, you know suffered. We were expecting to see um, more of a hit in terms of uh, pricing valuations, um, but you know has really sort of seen sort of record prices now in the second hand car market. Um, as a result of people needing a vehicle to be able to get to work, so some of these some of these impacts are sort of changing. Some of them can be a little bit counterintuitive because there's just so many moving parts. But they can have economic impacts on people's business models, um, and then also as a result, their collections processes. So, so that's that's being watched quite uh, quite quite carefully. Um, other things that we're expecting to come up um, will be things around. So there's obviously a backlog in terms of things like debt sale, litigation, repossession. Um, and there's a lot of thought just really around well, what's going to happen when things start to move again or things are starting to move. Um, and we'll, we'll, how will that get backlog get processed? Um, you know, thinking about, you know, you know, 
what will be the time frames of that and what are the consequences of that. Um, the, the other thing that's sort of top of mind is around what happens with a second wave and a re-lockdown. Um, you know, so if we were to go to a full uh, national lockdown again, can we handle that? Are our processes robust enough to be able to handle that? Um, you know, are our processes uh, digitally ready to be able to to be able to to be able to process the you know a, a similar kind of situation? Uh, and I think the other aspect is then just what happens with local lockdowns. So we had um, you know one of the exa first examples was Leicester. I mean, what happened when when Leicester when when Leicester closes down, or if it's um, let's say it was Nottingham, or um, you know even even sections of um, of London, the businesses in those areas will will, will struggle for, for business potentially if they don't have a robust strategy. There might be financial difficulties there. They might have people who can't get to work in this, but they they'll be a very local isolated uh, kind of a kind of kind of area. But then from a collections point of view, how do we handle that, and how do we make sure they've got targeted support for the, for those customers? And then and then lastly, which sort of links into the future uh, element around models and scoring. Um, and, and this is sort of starting to play out a little bit more, um, which is just, you know, we've, we've had obviously impacts on the portfolio um, and particularly around things like credit bureau reporting. So, you know, people have been on payment holidays, it ha they, they haven't made payments uh, and it hasn't impacted their credit bureau. And that's, that's, those are the rules that came out. So we've got this strange kind of reporting that will that you will be able to see in terms of, you know, pe people looking slightly different. And I think the, the question's going to be, I mean, both in credit bureaus, but also in terms of internal reporting as well. The question really is around, or the reflection really is around, what does that do to your collection segmentation models? Are they still going to be predictive? Um, you know, do the, does the scoring still give the same kind of um, uh, prediction that it did historically? And the view has been very much, well, look, yes, um, they probably rank order in the same, in the same kind of way. Um, but there will be some subtle changes, um, and you know, and you know, so so that needs to be considered together with things like RFS nine modelling impacts, and even I think in the future will be around, you know, if they under or over predict, will they have changes that need to be made, for example, on uh, cutoff scores for acquisition. So that's that's still what to flow through. So then, just on the future column, other things that have been talked about now with things like target operating models. So do we have the right people in the right locations, the right number of people? Uh, and how do we reimagine what we do uh, if we go to a work from home strategy or versus an all in the office strategy? Um, um, you know, other, other, other things that, that, that are still there is around, well, what happens from a demographic point of view, whether people are in the office or not, how are the, how are, you know, uh, the, pop, the population going to change in terms of like readiness for things like contact channels, et cetera. Um, and then, then there's the B word, uh, Brexit, which, which, which I think uh, I, 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 hate, I, I hesitate to mention, but is, there, is potentially due at the end of the year. So, you know, will that have another impact uh, on the collections processes and on the, on the economy or not? So, so I think that's, that's also out there as well. Uh, and then there are other impacts, such as we've, don't forget, we've got the breathing space change going in at the start of next year as well. So, so, so. So those those are those are sort of like the, the main impacts and the main hot topics. And, and as I sort of sort of think about what our our model is in terms of how we how we think about how we should respond to that, I sort of we sort of created this slide here in terms of like known and known unknowns and unknown unknowns, which is a real mouthful to say, um, but I think sort of help illustrate just some of the themes we've got to be thinking about. Um, so, th so it's the, the future sort of breaks out into these into these four boxes. So first we have the, the known known. So these are things we know about and we know how to handle. So things like, you know, what exact details around the, um, you know, the payment holiday date or the, you know, the, the employment, um, the employment of the furlough scheme and the impacts, et cetera. Um, you know, what the restrictions are. I mean, these are things we know about and we know how to handle them. Um, then we have the known unknowns, which are things that, that, that we know how to handle them if we have if we have the data, um, but we don't quite know what the size of it's going to be. So we have things. So we have issues or topics such as you know what going to be the long term wellness or health impacts around around COVID, which I think was quite uncertain at the start. Probably getting a little bit more known. Um, the collection model piece I just talked about, um, which is you know if we know the details, um, we know how to handle it, but we don't. But the details aren't quite clear yet. The exit volumes and circumstances, the, you know, how quickly we're going to come back, um, you know, the current forbearance, the, the current forbearance treatment. So we, we, we know what to do, but we just don't quite 
we don't have the data to be able to prove what the best is for the situation. So we're sort of like, we know that we don't know it yet. Um, you know, and things like the future of home working. So what's, what's society going to do? Are we going to be all at home? Are we going to we'll go back to the office? Or are we going to be some sort of hybrid model in between? And then we have the, the unknown unknowns, which is things like, you know, these are things that, 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 you know, that, 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 we, that we don't quite that we don't quite know yet. So, for example, we don't quite know the extent of the job losses. Um, you know, we don't know you know quite the extent of the the economic decline. Um, the other things, other things like industry linkages. So, the the world at the moment is so complex. You have an impact in one industry, it'll have cascade effects through to other other um, uh, other industries. And what does that mean from a collections point of view? You know, will there be a second peak? You know, will there be a a, a return? Uh, you know, a return from lockdown, or we're going to have, you know, what's the, what's the status going to be in terms of like, you know, society, immunity, etc. Um, and then we have the unknown unknowns, which is just everything's off the table, and these are complete surprises to us. So this model, I think, is quite helpful in terms of like categorizing the different um, topics that that we see in the future. And I think as we respond to it, um, it's almost like the top the top line is really around. To, to respond to that, we've got to have data. So we've got to have data to really understand what is the size of the issue, um, you know, and because if we know the size of the issue, then we can have strategies around it and we can capacity plan as an example. The ones on the bottom is really around just understanding trending. So, so, so how is it evolving and understanding, you know, what are the linkages as an example? So it's the really difference between monitoring the data, the detailed data, and then monitor the trends that can give you an insight into the future. And then going to the two columns down is really around, well, the, the, the knowns is really around having robust plans. So as soon as we know it, we can then have a robust plan um, because we, we, kind of, we, kind of, we, kind of know, we kind of know what to do. And I think the, the second piece is, second, the second column is then we don't quite know how it's going to pan out, but we need to be flexible just to be able to make sure that we actually can handle the situation if it goes the way we, we need to. And that would be an example, for example, of the pandemic. You know, if we had a lot of them, a lot of us didn't have you know, the, the exact type of payment holiday um, configuration within the collection systems. If, if that had happened, it would have made life an awful lot easier. So think about think about flexibility and have really good, robust planning, I think, is the, is, is, is the summary on that. Um, and so we've obviously at, at Aram, we've obviously been working with with clients, um, helping them think a bit about what the exit is going to be. Um, and we produced this playbook, um, really, which was just our, our recommendations and thoughts as we work through with people and observations around what, what are the key themes that we think are important to think about. And there's a summary on the slide on the screen now. Um, and you know, if you want more detail, you're more than happy to, to, to go to the website here and sort of download, download the full copy as well. So you know, more, than, more than happy to chat further about it. So um, the, the, the five themes that, that, that we sort of break it out into is really around think a little bit about organization. Um, so that's, that's, that's the, first, the, the first theme, which is, you know, as we exit, think about, you know, first top of mind is really around workplace safety, employee safety, support. Um, you know, can we think about how we would build all of our processes in a virtual world? Because that's going to be thinking digitally is going to be fairly future proof. How do we think about speed of decision making and compliance in the new world? And then obviously then just revisiting business continuation plans if something else happens or we go back into re-lockdown. The second theme is then really around strategy analytics or collection strategy and analytics. Um, and this is really around like how do we think now around pro proactively ca contacting customers? Gathering data now is probably one of the best things we can do because it's going to give us information to segment in the future to work out who's really in financial difficulties versus not, who's a good customer who will get back on their feet versus those who might be in financial, you know, longer term financial difficulties. And gathering the information from them today will help us in the future. You know, building digital customer journeys, um, uh, reinforcing the vulnerable process. We have some people who are going to be in quite a lot of stress, um, you know, including financial hardship. Um, and then just starting to plan around these potential collection model impacts. Third theme is then just really around technology. Um, you know, how do you maximize your current technical capability today using your, um, using your existing infrastructure? Then it starts thinking around, well, then can we create um, digital channels, start to think about automation, and how do you start to enhance that that is going to enable the flexibility in the future? 
Um, um, and, you know, and thinking about things like working from home infrastructure, which, you know, do, as an example, do you have a, a hybrid uh, or a hybrid model if you just want to start bringing people back that's going to be flexible should we have another re-lockdown? The fourth element uh, then is really around operation execution, um, you know, and I'd obviously say top of mind is around making sure you've got, um, you know, the, the uh, well-being amongst your workforce, um, making sure that, you know, they're safe on site if, if people do come back. But then really it's around having the right capacity, doing the capacity planning, making sure you've got the, the flexibility to be able to handle the volume that's expected to come through uh, as a result of this tsunami of arrears that we're expecting. Um, investing in things like uh, hardship portals um, or uh, automated INE has been a big sort of time saver that can help with capacity for sure. And then lastly is then, well, what's the plan to handle expected backlog volumes um, you know, once some of these re processes restart? Um, and then lastly, um, it's really around performance management. So you know, we, we've put in all these changes that have been put in place. A lot of them have been put in place very quickly. Um, you know, so you know, how do you measure the impact of that? And how do you measure the impact and forecast what's, what the performance is going to be going forward? Um, so, for example, you know, do we have, you know, track those who have had real COVID issues versus not? Uh, and the blend, of, um, uh, the blend of scenarios that will happen in between. Thinking a bit about post-change controls, uh, you know, so a lot of the changes that were put in uh, at the start in particular were sort of were put in very, very quickly. Do you need to go back and just consider, were they the right changes? Were they the optimal changes? And is the right documentation, the right evidence to make sure that you can demonstrate that those are the right things, that the right decisions were done? And potentially there might even be remediation that needs to be done as well. So, but doing that now um, is, is going to really help you because you're not going to be snowed under if you do have uh, you know, issues later on. Um, thinking about new KPIs, um, you know, particularly if you're in a working from home environment, and I don't think we're not thinking that they're necessarily going to change hugely. Um, but what we do think will happen is you just got to be conscious around the situation that are people are in. And so having a refresh around the KPIs um, is definitely worth looking at. Um, and then, you know, flexible action plans, performance triggers, uh, and then the RFS9 and uh, financial impacts as well. So I say we, we've been sort of using this framework really to sort of guide people around where are good places to look, what are some of the things to think about, um, you know, and, you know, obviously helping them build some of those plans. Um, if, if, you wanna, if you want a little bit more detail, there's a, there's a document, so just go to the link, just go to the link shown on the screen, um, and uh, we're, we're happy to sort of take you through that. So, um, so, so that's, that's, that, that's it, really. I'm happy to take any questions. Um, I think... Um, you know, we are expecting there to be, a, you know, significant changes uh, coming through the next couple of months. Um, I think it's, um, you know, everyone is expecting to there be, you know, significant volumes of arrears coming through. I think there's a sort of, there's obviously a spectrum between the level of um, sophistication that's, that an investment has gone in in terms of like preparedness for that. But I do think it's worth sort of, you know, thinking about and preparing for significant increases in volume in the next couple of months, really. Um, um, so I hope that's been helpful. Um, and um, I mean, Mark, I'm happy to take any 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 kind of questions, really. Well, cheers, Chris. We'll just give people um, a few seconds to see if uh, any questions are submitted. There haven't been any as yet, but if anyone does have any questions, please send them through. We have about a minute remaining. Um, so if, we, if people do submit questions and we don't have time to answer, we will get back to you or we will put them up with the links um, on our website to this webinar as well. So I'll just give people a few seconds um, and then situation. What, what I'd also say, um, uh, Mark, is if, if people do come up with questions afterwards, then obviously just just, just go to the Aaron website. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, we're very easy to get in contact with, and we're always happy to, to discuss discuss these things these things further or answer any questions sort of directly. I mean, we're, we're fairly easy to find. So, um, um, and, you know, and but the lifeblood of... Um, you know, these conversations of these kind of issues is, is having conversations and you know, sort of you know, talking talking about you know, re really trying to help people to what's going on and talking about what's going on as well. So more than happy to to, to field any questions even even after the session is done as well. So that sounds like a, a rather a sensible suggestion there, Chris. <laughs> okay. um, there, don't, there don't seem to be um, any questions come through at the moment. So um, I'd like to thank you, Chris. For you're welcome.
it was a very interesting and informative webinar there today. So um, everyone who's uh, listening, I'd like to remind you all that today's webinar will be made available on the CSA website from tomorrow if you'd like to listen again or if you want to recommend it to colleagues who weren't available today. Finally, before you go, um, we'd appreciate it if you would take a few seconds to give feedback on today's webinar and the relevant area provided. Um, in the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for your time today. Take care and goodbye.